I'm making this right now for anybody in the world that's dealing with stress. Anybody in the world right now that's sad and depressed. Anybody right now that doesn't know the answer and feel like they have to guess. I'm here for you. And through the help of God, I'm going to teach you secrets and tricks. How not to get depressed. Number one, don't expect too much from people. Trust me when I tell you. Because if you put your stock in people, they're going to let you down and you're going to get hurt. Especially if you think people, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated. And you're a super nice guy and people are going to be rude to you. It's going to affect you. It's going to hurt you. Don't expect too much from people. Trust me. And if you're going to ever say sorry to somebody, never say sorry. And even like, let's say somebody did you wrong and you're going to come and say sorry just to be nice. Don't expect them to say sorry back. That's already expecting too much. Say you're sorry. Keep it classy. They don't want to apologize. Put your ego down. Keep it moving. You understand? That's number one. Number two, know that God is watching always and he's a fair and just God. Read his Torah. You're going to see that no man could write this book and you're going to see it's really the word of God and you're going to see what he says that you only get stress when you sin so if you're going through problems right now in your life that's because of sins that you committed work on what you need to work on whatever you're sinning with stop it and you're going to see how things are going to get better another great advice is if you get depressed have a diary and make a list of all the miracles that God did for you everybody I know even if somebody came to me right now and claimed oh God didn't really do anything for me what are you talking about you're alive Right now, bones and meat speaking. He's already doing for you. Your heart beating, the ability that you have a tongue made of meat that enables you to speak. You think I'm bugging? Bite your tongue and try to speak. You can't. Your tongue is making you speak. How could a piece of meat make you speak? Because it's a soul that God put a holy soul in you that allows you to speak with intelligence and reasoning like a computer. And what you feed that computer, that's what's going to lead you. If you feed your computer a lot of holy, beautiful words of God, you're going to get led on a path of holiness and next to God. If not, then not. That's how you get out of depression. You understand? By stopping the sin. But if right now you're already in depression, also understand that God loves you. He put you here in a test. If you Don't tell me, I can't pass the test. I can't pass the test. I can't pass. Baloney. If God is putting you through the test, you can pass it. I'll prove it to you. If I had a daughter and I told her, listen, you like this bike? And she said, oh, daddy, daddy, please buy me this bike. I said, okay, no problem. I'm going to give you a test. I'll ask you a math question. She's nine years old. I said, if you get this question right, I'll buy you the bike. So I asked her, what's the square root of 3,609? Of course, she's not going to know that at seven years old. That's not a fair test. So would I do that? Of course not. So what, God is going to do something unfair? Come on. So you're in the test. That's a fact. You could pass the test. Understand it's a marathon, not a sprint. You're going to fail. Moshe Rabbeinu failed. Yes or no? Okay. So people fail. You make mistakes. You're human. By the way, that's something that brings me something I told my mother the other day. To me, the best proof that the Torah is the word of God is check the Quran. There's not one bad word spoken about Muhammad. Check the New Testament. There's not one bad word spoken about about Yosko, about JC. But the Torah... Look what it says about Moshe Rabbeinu, that he sinned and he desecrated Hashem's name. That's craziness, but that's what it says. It said that Hashem, that he did a sin and he didn't sanctify Hashem's name. And for that, you're not going to enter Eretz Yisrael. That was the sin he did with the rock. They told him, get water from this rock. Hashem said, get water, let's say, from a blue rock. But then the people, Datan and Aviram, they got all the people to go against Moshe to doubt him by saying, okay, fine. That's a special rock that you know of from the desert. Obviously, it's going to give water. Now get water from this rock and show that you're real. Moshe Rabbeinu should have known not to fall for these wicked people and what they talk. Don't. Who cares what they're saying? God said, speak to this rock, you speak to this rock. But instead, he made an executive decision to go speak to a different rock. And it didn't work. Then he got frustrated. He took his staff. He hit it. Still didn't give water. Then he really hit it. Then water started to trickle out and came out. And the people laughed. That minute that he was struggling with the rock to give water, Datan and Aviram and the people laughed. Therefore, he didn't sanctify Hashem's name. For that, he got punished. He wasn't allowed to enter Israel. That's in the Torah. Hashem is not politically correct. You understand? He's going to tell you sins that our leaders did for us to learn from it. You understand? And nobody, 
it's my personal opinion, is on the level of Moshe Rabbeinu. I know some rabbis will say Rabbi Akiva because he earned it. Moshe Rabbeinu was given into it. But the truth is, Hashem says that Moshe Rabbeinu was the greatest prophet that ever lived. And if I don't think Rabbi Akiva was a prophet. So obviously that's already higher. Just the fact that you're a prophet means I guess you have more schut to speak directly to Hashem. But that's a conversation for big giants to have. I'm just giving my simple opinion on that. But we all know who Rabbi Akiva is and we all know who Moshe Rabbeinu is. And they sometimes made mistakes. And they'll admit it and say, I need to be better at this. And that's the beauty of the Torah. It's 100% the truth. Unadulterated, unvarnished truth. No politically correct. No bias towards this person or the other person. No. You were bad. You sinned. You will get exposed. Simple. And that's why I love the Torah so much. That's why I'm so drawn, so attracted to it. Just like a baby. You know how your soul's attracted to a baby? Even if the baby's not good looking, you're still attracted to it because it's adorable. You understand? But the truth is you're attracted to his soul, not to his smile. You understand? And it's the same thing to me. I'm attracted to the Torah because of its spiritual value. You understand? It's the direct word of God talking to me. That's why when I read in Parsha Israel, Kitavo, Hazinu, and all these other Parshiot, if you follow my laws, you're blessed. You don't, you're done. <laughs> I'm not really understanding it. A third grader right now can understand that. If he was my kid, I said, Moshe, listen, you do this, I'm going to punish you. You don't do this, I'm going to reward you. That's it. He understands. It's not that such a hard of a concept. But yet the Jewish people don't understand? No, they don't because they get fooled by the Satan. Most of the Jewish people don't even know there's a Satan tricking them. You have to get in tune. The Torah will tell you there's a Satan. He comes to make you sin. That's why it says in Shema, don't follow after your heart and your eyes. Why does it say the heart before the eyes? Because the temptation is in the heart. First you get the feeling to want to look. Then you look, then you sin. That's why Hashem says, I want your heart. Keep the heart pure. Naki kapayim vebar levav. Clean hands and a pure heart. I love that. Keep that heart clean, man, because that's where your temptations and your desires for good and bad come from. And the soul is supposed to be the holy captain of the ship. But if that captain is drunk or is sleeping... <laughs> He's not going to be able to do his job. And that's what happens when the heart takes over the brain. Then you get fooled and you make bad decisions. You understand? That's why a husband would cheat on his wife. Because he's thinking with his heart, not with his brain. You understand? If he was thinking with his soul, he wouldn't make that sin. He'd understand. He'd lose his wife. He'd lose his kids. Alimony, the shame. It's not worth the sin. But since the devil is there tricking him, he falls for it. You understand? And we as a nation and as a people... Have to get closer to God, bro. Just follow my lead, man. Hop on my back, B. I'll tell you exactly what to do, man. Get close to God. Study His Word. Learn secrets. Learn about what goes on in heaven. Learn what goes on in hell. It's important. I have a book that speaks about it. Seven Chambers in Heaven. Like, so bright. Like, shiny ice. You ever see ice? Like, it's like super shiny, like a crystal diamond you understand like that so there's one chamber that looks like that with this with that this name of an angel and that angel and this angel looks over this and then in hell you have another seven chambers and this one like I spoke about in the past uh, lecture has smooth walls so if you go to grab onto it there's nothing to grab onto so the devils are able to push you lower and lower you understand that's a big pain for the soul there's many different secrets just learn study get close to Hashem no that it's all real, man. It's punishments and reward. The 13 principles of faith, number 11. God rewards the righteous and punishes the wicked. Don't let anybody ever tell you differently because if they do, the Satan is tricking them to give you that advice. Don't listen. Trust me when I tell you fear and shame is a beautiful thing. Ask Adam and Eve. When they ate from the tree of knowledge, what happened? They felt fear and shame. They didn't eat from the tree of life. From the tree of knowledge and wisdom From the tree of good and bad They ate They felt fear and shame That means that's spiritual wisdom <laughs> If you're eating from a tree that's called the, the tree of wisdom And this fruit gives you wisdom And you eat the fruit And now you realize that you're naked And you're afraid because you went against the word of God That shows that fear and shame are very high spiritual qualities to have 
have that because when you have shame, you won't walk around naked. When you have fear, you'll be less likely to sin. You understand? And that will keep you straight. Reshit Chochma Yirat Hashem, the foundation of spiritual wisdom is to fear God. Don't get it twisted. I'll tell it to you a billion times if Hashem gives me the chut to say it. A billion times to let you know. He's watching. You're going to be judged. You bully somebody, God will send somebody to bully you. I remember Larry Bird one time said, there can always be somebody out there better than me. That's why I always practice. No matter how good my jump shot is, I know there's somebody out there that might be better, so I practice more. You understand? And that's how you got to be. You got to be disciplined, work, try, gain the spiritual knowledge so you can battle the Satan. How are you going to fight the Satan? It's a spiritual war. You can't come with guns and bombs and grenades. That's not going to affect him. You know what will affect him much more than a grenade? Spiritual wisdom. When you tell him, listen, I'm not going against my father. I'm not going to be ungrateful. I'm not going to do things that are going to come back to kill me later on when I get judged for eternity in front of God. I'm not going to lose my olam haba. I'm not going to do things that are going to detach me from Hashem. That's the speech you give to Satan. That's powerful. That meant any bomb, that any tank, that any F-16, F-35, F... I don't know what stealth, super stealth bomber. That's not what's going to defeat the Satan. What's going to defeat the Satan is spiritual wisdom. As you tell him, I'm not doing a sin. It's not worth it. That you never lose when you do the word of God. Don't expect too much from people. Put your ego down and make peace. If you have a chance to get revenge, don't. Hashem is testing you. When a Satan comes to you and says, get revenge on him, you can expose him, you can embarrass him. Don't. Sit back, let Hashem expose him and embarrass him. He doesn't need you. Hashem is super duper duper capable of doing whatever he wants. Yes, if there's somebody doing a big sin and it's affecting the community, it's not a personal issue, of course you say something to stop it. But first you go to the person in a classy way and you tell them, listen, what you're doing is wrong. You need to stop. And if the person gets rude and disrespectful and you need to warn the community, you can do it. It's not a problem. God will back you with that. Trust me. That's what he says in the Torah. So, you know, Because if you didn't stop him and he robbed people in the community and you knew he was doing it and you didn't want to get involved, you will be punished for that. You're complicit. You understand? That's the knowledge of God. Never make his children suffer. Do everything in your power to make sure you're good with everybody before you leave this world. That's what I would tell my son if I had a son. Do everything you can to put your ego down and make peace. And when you have this, and when you leave this world, you don't want problems with nobody. You understand? You be good with people. You be good with Hashem. No matter what, if somebody comes and disrespects you or wrongs you, Hashem will take care of it. Always remember that, man. Why you need to do the effort? Hashem is telling you, leave it to me. I'll take care of it. All right, no problem. You could probably take care of it a lot better than I can. And sit back and let him do it. Hashem wants to help you. It's like a father that wants to help his son. He's carrying something heavy. So the father comes to him and says, and says let me take it for you. Let me carry it for you. If the son wants to carry it, fine. The father will let him carry it. You do the work. But why? If your father would do it for you, let Hashem take the burden and the stress. You just be a good person. Do the right thing. Follow his laws. Fix your flaws. And he'll be there for you. Trust me when I tell you. Because like I said... You never lose when you do the word of God. Amen.